Hello. When contemplating a movie as a producer, all you're essentially doing is exactly what you do for a short film. You're just employing the same cast, the same crew, for longer. When I made Grey's In Between, I shot it in just seven days, but they were seven days over the space of about two months. That gave me the space and the time to organise the day, wherever the location was to be, and, and then double check I knew exactly what I was doing and what I needed to capture. It took the pressure off my lead actress, meaning we could all go about our business, earning a living from the day job, whatever, which becomes important if you aren't paying anyone anything. And then you all come together again to do another chunk and get it done. Because there was no financier, no exec breathing down our necks, no clock ticking, time is no longer money and that really takes the heat off. Plus I could then be flexible when it came to location availability, crew availability or unsuitable weather for exterior days, working around them rather than attempting to force them to work around my schedule when I simply didn't have the cash to make it happen. I know for a fact Blade director Steve Norrington has been doing the same thing out in Oregon where he's piecing together his new feature. He's shooting it when he can, in chunks, then taking that footage home to edit, chewing it over, realising he can do something better, do something different, while simultaneously storyboarding and then also building a jib arm out of the timber from the last set build for his next outing. It's incredible. The man's a walking film school. So you sit down, either as your own producer or with your co-pilot, to unpick the screenplay and work out the logistics of every component. Then you can decide how best to cut things up. Is it reliant on four main locations, for instance, that may have availability issues? Can you only get into a meat factory in the evenings or is the flower market only happening on a Saturday? Things like this will most likely be the deciding factor as to how your shoot is going to shape up, when it's going to happen and so in what order the story is going to be shot versus the order of the plot on the screenplay. Standard for nearly every shoot but important for the actors to know too prior to the shoot. If possible, and it is more so for a no budget perhaps, is that I like to shoot it as close to the story arc as I possibly can, purely for the actors, so they get to unfurl the character in chronological fashion. Someone like Mike Lee or Ken Loach absolutely work in chronological order, and some don't even share script pages with their actors in advance, so they have no idea what's going to happen in the next scene, feeling that this way their actor reactions have a veracity as they're reacting new for the first time. Slightly harder to pull off on no budget, depending, as I say, on other constraints, but certainly not impossible. I do find, as I say, that the better I can do to retain chronology for the actors' arcs, the happier they're generally going to be. And of course, when you are shooting no budget, anything that helps the actors is a good thing to consider at the planning stage. It's not always going to be possible, but even partial adherence to the story structure will definitely be appreciated. So moving forward then, it's the logistics of the shoot. Everyone needs to get to the location. They need somewhere maybe to get changed, a loo, and then feeding at lunchtime. Then there's props, costumes to consider. But again, if you break up the shoot, say you figure it's a two-week shoot, but you spread it over a month or three, it takes a lot of the sweat, a lot of the pain out of it. This simply can't be done on a proper shoot because time is money. It's impossibly wasteful. But here, it actually ends up saving you, like as not. It also gives you a bit more room. Say, for whatever reason, the actual shooting is delayed through unforeseen circumstances, whether noise from an unforeseen construction site or technical issues with the camera. It does mean that the cast and crew are, on balance, more inclined to accept pressing on to get it in the can, even though you've run two, four hours over. In the knowledge, they haven't got a 6am call the next day. Going back to catering, the one thing I would say, the one golden rule, is feed everyone. If you can at least feed your workers, I found they'll smash through walls for you. A fed crew is a happy crew. That and be organised. Don't let any nasty surprises be down to your lack of planning. Mm -hmm.